Hello, so we are going to go over making a bouncing ball. If you took Art 184, you might remember this. Um, basically, it's just a ball that's bouncing from one place to another. Follow an arc. And we have uh, um, a squash and stretch with it. So what we're going to go over is the process here. Uh, you should have had in the assignment of this um, ball rig that's set up. Um, here I have it open, and I'm going to go ahead and this is the uh, ultimate ball rig. You see that we have the ball itself. We have these rings around it. And these rings are controls. If I select this one, at the top, and if I go down, it smashes. I go up, it stretches. I'll do a Control Z to undo that. What I did was I clicked and dragged here to select this control. You can see these control these uh, items here on the left. We have Select, which is also Q. If I hover over it, it says select tool, and the shortcut is Q. With a lasso tool, paint selection. We don't really use those that much, but then we go down here to move, which is also W. So you notice that that was Q on your keyboard, top left Q for select, then W to move. The next one is rotate. That's E right next to it on the keyboard, and then R, which is scale, okay? So we're going to mostly use the move tool. We can do this here. We can see that what we have here for this animation, we have a timeline at the bottom. And right now we're on frame zero. And go ahead and click and drag to slide this time slider back and forth to go through time. But I'll start here at zero. I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, do another thing here. I'm going to click um, this control on the bottom, this triangle. This is the move. the move uh this is like a the global control It'll move everything so i'm going to click on my keyboard i'm going to click s that's to put a keyframe s here on frame zero it's giving me an error let's see if i click s it says no cable attributes. What's that mean? Okay, I'm going to look up here in channel box. <clears throat> okay, well, I will select um, this one here, this circular control on the bottom. You can see that will allow me to, uh, let's see, what's this one? Okay, this one around. The middle here will select that, and I will click S. And you see when I do, it puts this keyframe right at the beginning on frame zero. Down here on the bottom right, there's uh, the second from the bottom right. It says auto keyframe toggle. I'm going to turn that on and off. If I turn it off, yours is probably off by default. Uh, if I turn it on, it turns red. Now that I've laid this keyframe here on frame zero, I'll go to say frame 20. And when I move it, you see that it makes a red mark. It automatically makes a keyframe here in the timeline. And I can scroll through <coughs> and see how it's tweened in between these two movements. Okay, so on frame 20, I'm going to click S because I want to keyframe everything. And you see when I do, everything here turns red here in this, this channel box here on the top right. So it's translate X. That's red. It's been keyframed. Translate Y, red keyframe. Translate Z, 
keyframe rotate. All of that's been keyframed. Okay, so now I'm going to go halfway in between here, between 10, 1, 0, and 20. I'm going to go to frame 10, and I'm going to lift up on this ball. using this middle control and we see that it's automatically made a, a keyframe here it's up bounces and then back down there we go now let's click play what i want to do is i want to right click on my timeline i want to go to playback speed and I want to make sure that's set to real time, which is good. And right here in this bottom window here, this is the thing that shows how many frames are actually shown. We'll put this on frame 20, enter, and I'm going to click play. You see it play out. Okay, so that's good. It's showing my speed. When it shows it, it's just kind of a, if you look at the speed, there's no variance to it. It's all the same speed. And if you remember anything in Art 184 or any of the other classes, we're dealing with ease in and ease out. We want to make some parts faster and some parts slower in its movement. So we can do that. We can do that here if I go up to the, my workspace here at the top where it says Maya Classic. And I'm going to click here, and I'm going to put this on animation. I'm just going to change my workspace to mirror what I need to animate. Uh, I kind of did a thing here with these four views. I don't need that. I'll just go ahead and click the one view. That's here on the left. It's one view. Here's four view. Here's one view right here and I'm also going to click here this other button it shows this list that's this list here the outliner I'm going to click that off I don't need that okay so now I can see this thing here this graph it's that's been put on top of our timeline that's our graph editor what I want to do is I want to take say this um, let's put this on Uh, translate Y, but translate Y, and that shows where it goes up and down. And I'm going to click one of these keyframes. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to tangents, break tangents here. I'm going to grab this handle that's right here. Take this handle, and I'm I selected it, and I'm going to use my middle mouse button, my scroll wheel, to pull it up. When you do that, let's push play from the beginning. Now let's do that with the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one, and I'm going to right click this keyframe, and I'm going to click break tangents, and I'm going to select this handle, and I'm going to go up, and I'm going to click play. Let's see if we can make this go a little bit higher on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead. Oops. Make sure that the handle is selected. So you can see here, like it, it see how it kind of levels off at the top? We don't really want that. We want this to be more of a smooth arch, but we can kind of see how it's it's bouncing bang, up faster and then coming back down a little faster. That's great. So I'm going to click stop. I'm going to grab this middle keyframe and I'm going to lift it up just a little bit, make sure it has that retained arc. Okay. We have some of that variance in speed, and that's cool. All right. Now let's look at, we'll go back here to frame one, or frame zero, excuse me. And I'm going to click uh, the stretching, squash and stretching controller at the top. And I'll go ahead and click 
S. I'm going to go to frame 10 and I'm going to click S. And then I'll come back down to frame zero. And from here, I'm going to squash it like this. Frame zero, so it's squashed. And then frame one, I want to make it stretch. Okay. Here we can see it. It's gone stretch. Here, actually, I'm going to go to frame one. And I'm going to make, I think this kind of go, let me grab the bottom one, the bottom control here. This will also do some squash and stretch. So go to zero and I'll click S. I'll go to 10 and I'll click S. That way it's putting a keyframe there and it'll go back to its original shape. But at frame one, this is going to pull down to the ground. There we go. So it goes boom. And then goes to normal size. And then as it's coming to frame 20, I'm going to say frame 19 and grab this control also and stretch it up, 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 and down. So there we go. Frame 19. Now we'll go to 20. This will come back up. And this will go down, and this will come down here. There we go. This comes up. There we go. So what I'm looking at is, okay, this is squished. This comes up good. I think with this one, I can get rid of this frame here. I'll just go ahead and right-click and go. If I click it, if I click delete, is it going to delete my keyframe? Yes, it will. So what I want is this one to go here. Stretch up. There we go. So what I did, you see there, I had it squashed, then stretch up, and then it retains its normal shape when it reaches the top of the arc, and then stretches down as it comes down to meet ground, and then squashes. Okay, so that's all good. Let's go ahead and click play and take a look at it. Good. So one thing that I want to do is instead of having it stretching straight up, I'm going to select uh, um, this middle handle, and I'll go ahead and I'll go from this. Let's see. I got this frame, and I'll go over to this frame, and I'll click R. So this is frame 19, or E, and I'm going to make this rotate right towards the top of the arc. Okay, and then when it comes over to say frame zero and then one, we'll also rotate. Let's go ahead and click play. There we go. So we got some rotation for it to, to go up. We can even spread this out. We could do a second one. So we can make this go to, say, frame 40. Forty over here. Thirty. 
30. Oops. I'm going to go to 40. And instead of, I've moved it over, but I'm going to click S on that keyframe for everything. And then I'll go to 30. And I'll click up. I'm going to go to frame 21 and click R or E to rotate. Let's see, frame 30, rotation, I'm going to put back on zero, rotate X here. And I'll go to frame 40, it's landing, so I'll go to 39 and rotate it going the other way. So there we go. So it rotates, straightens out in the middle, rotates again, and lands flat. Okay, so again, what are we doing here? 20. I'm grabbing this one, top control to squash. And now to stretch it. Forty is going to be squashed. Let's see at thirty, I want it to be normal. So I'm going to translate Y. I'll put that on zero. And this one, what's this one do? Zero on the bottom. Here on thirty nine. Up on the top one. There we go. So let's take a look. Let's click play. Looks okay, but one thing that I want to do is grab this middle one. And again, I want to um, look at this. Let's see. Translate Y. And right here I should have, let's see, this is frame 20. Uh, if I select this control. See frame 20, I want to right click and go to break tangents. Select this control here, the handle, and uh, with my middle mouse button, pull it up. And then right here on frame 40, I also select it, right click and go to tangents or break tangents. Select this handle and also pull it up. And there we go, and we'll click play. I think it's going a little too plateaued. And then I'll select this last key for make sure that's on zero. Safe scene as. Uh, that's what we want to do. The most important thing, we're going to go to File, Save Scene As, and I'm going to go to, I'm going to save it to my school, 
folder. Seven. Okay, and I'm going to call it folder. I'll bounce. The name of the file I will call ball bounce. Okay, and I can go ahead and turn, uh, click save as, and I can go ahead and save this file and turn this in for the assignment. Okay, so we covered uh, in our assignment uh, these controls for the ball. We covered the ball bounce. We covered the arc it's following. We covered how to use the graph editor to introduce ease in and ease out. We've got some squash and stretch using, the, using these controls. Okay. All right. Thank you.